Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to this week's recap video. We had a full schedule of videos this week. Like, I don't think we skipped any days, so nope. there should be six videos that I'm answering questions from. Aaron went through and gathered questions while I was outside gathering grass and weeds. Not gathering, edging grass. <laughs> Correction. I think you kind of like to do it, though. I do, but like, I'm sitting here, like, feeling really good that I did it physically, but also kind of spent physically because I did it. Both of the things. Anyway, so I'm just gonna jump right into the videos so we can roll. The first one was edging new flower beds and spreading compost. So I edged our new, uh, or kind of cut them out, our new flower beds up front. I had flags where I wanted, thought I wanted the flower beds so that we could get the sprinklers put in um, and that worked out really well. And I think the edge will improve over time. I wasn't able to get it perfection just because the grass isn't perfection yet. And there are some areas that are really kind of spotty with grass and some areas where it was growing like two feet into the flower bed. Those areas were really tough to lift that. But um, then uh, Paul and Aaron spread compost. We decided to go with a compost from our local, it's called Ontario Rock and Landscape. And they brought a load by, which it took two loads. Was that two full loads or a load and a half? Might have been like a load and a half or, or a load and three quarters. So one load is 12 yards. So we it covered a good amount of ground with that those two loads. So 18 yards roughly of compost for one flower bed. You Mercy. know what though? Makes it so much easier to spread it with the tractor. Yeah, yeah. Aaron and Paul use the tractor, so that is nice that you guys were able to do that. And then, um, yeah, it ended up taking two days just because it was a beast project. <laughs> and when I started that video, uh, when I was telling you guys what I was going to do, I thought, well, I can do the edging and maybe some mulch spreading, and then I'll just go ahead and plant some, a few things. And I started that video like mid afternoon. I thought I could do, I don't know what I was thinking. Anyway, it took a um, an afternoon and then another afternoon the next day so a full day collectively to do that project super satisfying to do though uh forever blooms with jennifer this is the top comment said i can't be the only one that watches laura do stuff and then literally pause the video to get something done in my garden that i've been putting off laura your energy and enthusiasm is definitely contagious thank you for whipping me into shape every day that's awesome to hear i'm glad that it's motivating you know what so have you guys seen those organizing videos are they like TikTok videos i don't know whose they are but they're like they bleed over onto facebook and they're, they're organizing videos what kind of organizing like pantry, refrigerator, <laughs> closet organizing. And I just spent a bunch of time on Amazon and a bunch of money on Amazon last night ordering stuff to organize my life because like behind closed doors, it's chaos. Like you open any cupboard or drawer in our house and it's like, what in the world happened here? Like so the bomb went off. Yeah. So it's happy. It, it's happy to me. It makes me happy to hear that our videos do that for you guys in some way awesome nikki said wow my back hurts just watching this video looks awesome what do you think about using preen for weed control does it affect bulbs coming up not that i know of i think bulbs are established i don't know i've never really thought about preen and bulbs hold on i don't want to say not that i know of and then have you guys use preen and have something happen so let me look it up really quick this is off of preen.com since bulbs are live plants weed preventers don't affect them as they do seeds to control weeds among bulbs scatter preen garden weed preventer over the beds in early spring according to label directions bulbs are seldom bothered by bugs or diseases so spraying is unnecessary you know that does make sense because i think that preen stops germination right and uh bulb is not germinating right but i had to think about that though because like it's still uh like a green thing coming up out of the soil yeah, like it's right. tender growth and you know anyway so yes it's, you're good we've never used preen have you uh no i've never used preen before we should try it at some point in like um like a section of the garden uh -huh. you know not just like Ooh, I, don't know. I know where we should use it we should use it under the golden rain tree those little pods, those lanterns, oh, they yeah. drop and then their seeds germinate the next year and it's, they're thick. Like in the brick raised bed area, the golden rain area, any flower bed up here around that tree, we should try it. Yeah, it's a good idea. <sighs> yeah. Joy said, with how hot your temperatures are in the summer, do you ever think about adding a garage area for parking? I think we should, prov we should provide, we should uh, create an area to park the gators and the lawn tractor, like behind the barn somehow so that we can park our trucks in the barn. I don't think we'll ever do that though because it's too far away from the house. Nobody wants to walk 
I mean, how far is it? Like oh, 50 yards from the house? It is not that much further, though, to walk to the barn than it is to walk. It's just far enough to where it's inconvenient. And there's no direct path from the house to the barn. But we're ripping this area up. I'm guessing we're going to probably create a more... Yeah, the ash tree will uh, always be in the way, though. I don't think the ash tree is long for this world. No, you're probably right. Mm -hmm. But the other thing is that the gators being behind the barn, that also puts them just far you know farther away and we use those gators all the time yeah like, that has been like the green the cold frame and the gators are two of the best purchases a lot of things have been the best purchases. i know it's true <laughs> it's true <laughs> like i could name a million things like the auger that you oh, use oh yeah that too can Add you imagine to not list. having that anymore no i, I can't nope Anyway, back to the parking area suggestion. <laughs> so Ashley, Aaron talked to me about that the other night because, you know, we park our cars kind of by the raised bed vegetable garden. And it, you know, it would be nice to provide some kind of cover right there. But I think if we built something there, it would look too much. Mm -hmm. I think that especially if it was something with a, a roof over it of sorts. Which well, my it, suggestion was just some type of a, like pergola kind but of. But that's not really providing cover you're right it's just providing vertical interest i mean yeah. unless you have an actual roof over it to protect the cars but even then our wind comes in like right. fierce from the west and i think they would always be getting there would be snow inside there there unless it was closed like it yep. would have to be a legit garage and i don't think there's space or i don't really want it there well we we store too many things in the barn to where you know it doesn't really make sense to park our vehicles in there mm -hmm. we park the gators in there so I, so for now we'll just leave our trucks out yeah it'd Thank be goodness nice if there the was a where, start. somewhere to put them it would be nice you know though we could put the white one could go park out on the like behind the orchard fence like the kind of work truck we don't yeah. use i mean there's two because you know you and that's I, a long but, way to go get it but you're actually you're not using it very often so it's not like you're getting into it but every you'd day you'd probably use it even less often if it was that far away well maybe you become more efficient <laughs> because <laughs> because you don't want to walk out there maybe maybe anyway uh sherilyn said is that a scrunchie on your wrist i do not have a scrunchie i have not owned a scrunchie for i don't know how many years you know, i, know I noticed like, that in the video though um what was that on your wrist that was a, it was an elastic hair tie Oh, I think that's what people mean by scrunchie. I know. Oh. But scrunchie is like a thing. And I think they people use scrunchies now, like like younger people <laughs> than me. Maybe, yeah. Maybe people my age do. I don't know. They're like back in style now. <sighs> Why? Anyway, the elastic... Why did you have it? Uh, I think I did put my hair up at one point. <gasps> And you didn't record it? No, I did not. Judy said, I would leave the tree where it is. It completes the tunnel effect of the driveway. Why not plant another big blue spruce in the area where the other one came down? They most likely have a tree service around there that can move big trees. You could stake it. Uh, oh, uh, there's no more up to that. It says read more. Oh. But I mean, that's the general gist, I guess. I was talking about moving the last red point maple on the left hand side of the lane that's in the flower bed and bumping it back behind kind of the infrastructure in that bed. We have a plug in and a faucet there. And I thought about it would be really neat to put a fountain kind of like nearby where the tree currently is and then have the tree behind it. Um, because right now, if we wanted to, to do a centerpiece, like a water feature of any kind, it would look weird to put it behind the tree be like uh it doesn't I really don't know work. I uh, but okay so answer the question like I don't know that you and I've actually talked about that like let's say we went and looked for a big blue spruce uh -huh. like like a big one maybe so like would you consider putting another one yeah. in the same spot mm -hmm. maybe we should do that we should run to Boise and just see if we can find anybody that has a really big blue spruce something you know something my big. sister just moved to Meridian which is right outside of Boise and there's a nursery right like a block down the road from them what's it called I can't remember but they looked they had some neat stuff oh. so I dropped Monica off the other day after we went shopping a little bit and um I actually pulled into the driveway but it was Labor Day oh and they were shut they were shut down they were closed just for the day which 
okay, like you can have day off, but <laughs> I was bummed out. I was bummed out that I couldn't go in because they had some really neat evergreen specimens out front and it appeared that they had some bigger stuff. Oh. So yeah, I would definitely plant Like, What do you think a big blue spruce is in your mind? How many feet tall? 15? Yeah. Planted. Yeah. Is that, was that legitimate? Like, is that I don't know. That you could It'd be buy? awesome if you could get them that big. I wonder how much it would cost that. though. Maybe we could cut a deal. <laughs> what kind of deal? I don't know. That'd be cool though. Uh, yeah, I think I'm not afraid to plant blue spruces just because that one came down. Um, that one was planted improperly, so there's that. Jordan said, anyone remember what type of grass seed they're growing? It's a mix of uh, perennial ryegrass and Kentucky bluegrass. It's a two thirds, one third mix. It's two thirds, do you remember if it's two thirds perennial rye, one third Kentucky blue or the other way around? I don't remember. Forgot to turn your phone off. <laughs> Tremendous progress from a longtime viewer. The only question I would have is why don't you till the areas and work in the compost with the second till? The no-till method. That's AKA, right. we don't, we don't we're being till. lazy. <laughs> kind yeah, of. that's kind of the answer. Yeah. In a, it's going to work its way down in there. And honestly, it's not disrupting the soil that's currently there, which is not bad. It looks bad. Like it looks horrible, but it grows stuff. At least all of our stuff out in the cut flower garden grows pretty well. Uh, Lindsay said, do you have any experience with fairy light gas or battery powered edgers? I have chronic pain issues, so a manual edger seems like the wrong tool for me. Yeah, I, it's a lot of work. I, I don't blame you for not using that. You well, my, can buy almost, sorry. That's okay. You can buy almost any edger, like electric edger, uh -huh. uh, trimmer, like, like think weed eater, and then flip it vertically and edge your grass that way. You can't get the deep. Like what I did was I like actually shoveled soil out because yeah. I created that like you really deep. You have to deep. initially manually. There's no machine that does that? Uh, no, there are. You can rent. You can rent edging machines. Um, but if you're already not wanting to mess around with, you know, the physicality of using well, a half moon edge. I edger. wonder, should we rent one for the loop? Is it very precise? No. Yeah, I think it's pretty precise. I don't think that you would like it. Really? Also, we have all those sprinklers and it needs <gasps> oh, it needs yeah. some kind of precision and yeah. and f some finesse. And the, the sprinklers aren't perfect. I mean, they, they did a super close job, but I just finished edging the pathway that leads to the cut flower garden today. And um, we have to move two sprinklers, not far. Like one needs to move this far and one needs to move like this far, which is not bad because there's a lot of sprinklers along that, along that edge but anyway judge me not gardener said when you have your compost delivered what kind of compost do you ask for you ordered that so i'm not sure what it's forest just uh forested compost there's there's a couple kinds like there's a manure compost um and they said that was pretty hot mm. so if you're not planning on planting for a while like let's say you're going to put something down in the fall and it's going to sit all winter and then you're going to plant next mm -hmm. spring that'd be fine probably mm -hmm. Um, cause it'll, you know, most have all places break though down. aren't selling a hot compost. I'm aren't guessing. They? I don't think so. I think they're proper, should be properly balanced. I'll bet you can find a manure compost though. Just to, I mean, especially areas like this where a lot of cattle are raised or perhaps, I mean, cause farmers are constantly trying to get rid of stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And luckily, like we live in an agriculture area, so there's plenty of fields to spread things like that. Yeah, true. Um, but that's what we did is the forested compost which is uh, more mild like mm -hmm. it's not it's not it's hot. mixed with a lot of brown carbon yeah. okay next video is packing these fall containers full and oh my my word did i ever pack those full and i'm enjoying them so much so what i started with though first were my uh, wicker looking wicker basket looking pots they're resin material i think or fiberglass is what they are and they are starting to crumble and fall apart <laughs> which that's probably why they aren't sold anymore. Um, but I love those containers because they are the perfect size. They are not heavy to move around. And if I just stain them every once in a while, it really makes them look brand new. I did try a different color of stain this time. I tried a golden pecan stain, Pe pecan. Did we decide how to say that? 
pecan. Well, I'm just going to go with that. Yeah. Anyway, it was too light. It wasn't covering up the like white rough spots on the side of the pot. So I went and got the, I think it was special walnut was what I ended up with, which is what I usually use. And it was beautiful. So I stained them and then I have a bunch of fall plants. I still have a bunch of fall plants I need to put in the ground and in pots and um, just packed them full. There's, I said that the plant was an uh, Rudbeckia, but it's actually an Echabeckia, which is an Echa Echinacea Rudbeckia cross. So they're Rudbeckia looking flowers, but they're hardier plant, which is really exciting. And I really, really wish I would have realized that before I planted them. I just kind of assumed, I don't know. Um, but the, the variety is pumpernickel and they're so beautiful. Anyway, they're really pretty up in front of our house. Uh, Zach Thomas Hillman said, I have a three inch open spot here in the back. Let me see if I can tuck a little something in here. Yes. I was able to fit a red mum, yellow pansies, a limelight hydrangea, and a beautiful water feature. <laughs> uh, I don't know how you do it. I've tried and end up with plants, and there's a read more sign on that one, Aaron. Oh. You cut, you, you're cutting people off today. <laughs> I don't know what the problem is. But I think the general gist of that is that I can pack a lot of things into a very small space. And I, I used to do it all the time. That's how I did it. That was just how I did it. And we have experimented with uh, giving things more space, which in some cases is a really good thing. Uh, for fall containers though, everything's just they're not putting on active growth. They're just kind of like at this point, we have temperatures, our nighttime temperatures are in the low 40s now. Like it gets chilly here at night, 84 during the day today, but our forecast for the 10 day, it's the end of it, a couple days in the high 60s. So we don't have very much longer before we're gonna be pretty chilly. Um, anyway, so things are just kind of like actively going dormant. They're not putting on active growth, so you can really pack stuff in and not expect them to be sad about it. Natalie said, uh, we are still very hot here in Louisiana, but boy, I can't wait for fall and winter. winter. Thank you for the inspiration. Question, kind of out of the blue. Whatever happened to the flowers you tried drying with some type of silica? So they were silica gel crystals. Hi, Russell. And um, we did a video. We took them out of the silica gel crystals and um, we put them in shadow box picture frames. That was last fall, right? They are beautiful and still are beautiful. They haven't lost color. I'm sure if you, well, if you display anything in like a sunny spot, I think they would lose color, but um, they're just great. Right now I have artichokes in the silica gel crystals, which I need to take out probably this week. They've been in there for a couple of weeks now, uh, but it's a really great method, a great way to dry flowers so that they maintain their shape instead of having to press them and they maintain color better as well. Donna says, do you top off your pots with soil? Sometimes I have to, but rarely. Um, usually I put a enough soil in the container to where I just kind of make a well, a planting well with my hand, and then I can pop the root ball in and just like kind of tamp soil in around the roots. Maureen said, I noticed that you put new potting soil in all your containers. What do you do with the old dirt full of roots? Uh, they typically go out onto the new property. They've just been kind of spread around out there. Unless if you've dealt with a bug or disease issue in your containers with your plants, then we toss that soil, like we throw it away. Um, we don't want to keep any kind of anything around uh, that could harbor over in soil. But anything that's clean just ends up out on the new property. We just kind of, which we're calling the South Garden now. The South Garden is what the new property is now being called well i don't think i mean be there's the cut flower garden the orchard the south garden and the lawn and the front lawn and, the strip. and then there's the east strip we just lawn. call it the strip yeah. yeah eileen said will you plant all the perennials from the pots into the garden seems a waste not to i always do i either plant them out into the landscape or i give them away to friends nicholas said does laura realize how dark deep dark intense pink those flowers are some of us might call that red but we are obviously mistaken no I'm, I'm getting soft on red, especially in fall containers. I don't think you'll be seeing me plant any like bright red flowers in the garden anytime soon, but for fall, it seems very appropriate and I really like it. Allison said, another beautiful composition. Were all of these plants available at your local garden center or did you hold things back or order them by mail? I ask pretty, uh, because pretty much all that's available around here right now that's not on the rescue rack are garden mums, not perennial, ornamental kale and cabbage, and that's about it. I envy you the variety of choices you enjoy. So how that works, you know, my parents have a garden center and they order from growers who 
grow all these plants. And growers usually have uh, what they call a program, like a fall program, a spring program, a summer program. And they usually send garden centers a like a little catalog of everything that they're gonna be growing for each one of those programs. And we used to show it to customers, I'm sure my mom still does all the time, and you know, that come in if they've got a wedding or an event or something like that where they want to plant some special colors. And so anybody can get their name on like, hey, I would love to have 10 flats of this or that. And, um, and that's what I do. I still do that. So my mom usually calls me when she gets one of those little catalogs and says, hey, you know, I, you can put in your fall pre-order if you want to. So that's what I did. I ordered a bunch of things that would all kind of match and some exciting new things. And um, then I just kind of indicate which week I want it and the grower usually sends it. And my mom does the same thing and I've done it for years. Like even before we started YouTube, <laughs> I would do a special order of things that I would like to have. Um, so that's something you might check with your local garden center because it's not like a privilege. <laughs> of mine. Anybody can do that if you get with the person who's ordering. Oftentimes I like, can show you a list of what's available to, to order and you can do that. But you have to do it early. You do have to do it early. Just keep that in mind. Um, I mean still they do weekly availabilities. You know they grow a lot of things and yeah. every week there's always a really nice long list of things that are available and so typically you can get your name on maybe not like if you were wanted 50 flats of something but if you want you know this or flat of this or flat of that you can typically order special and tack it on to your garden center's order that's if you have a garden center hopefully nearby you that does that sort of thing that stays open you know this time of year and joanna said why are some of the limelights floppy rainstorm yeah it's a kind of a coupling of rainstorm and i pruned them a little bit too severely this last year rule of thumb when trimming paniculated hydrangeas and arborescence really any type of hydrangea that blooms on new wood that you're pruning late winter early spring you only want to prune them back by about a third no more than that because if you do more than that it kind of takes away from the sturdy infrastructure of the plant and they'll still create new growth and bloom on that new growth but it's typically a little bit more weak so you want to keep that sturdy woody base going for your plant and i took mine down by a lot this last year i don't know why like because it felt good to do it i guess it felt good to take them down that far and so i won't be doing that this next year i'll be a little bit more i also think it was hard on them too with with all the the heat and the wind and the dust and then the downpour like it's not a little rainstorm it's like a gully washer yeah, it really was yeah. so i i think it was kind of maybe it was a combination of all those things and i pruned them in properly yeah so there you go uh, planting four varieties of low maintenance perennials. W said, Laura, and if you don't like it, I just saved you a bunch of money. <laughs> so I planted 18 hookra in a drift around some seducer hostas. And yeah, I did say that. <laughs> yeah. So I don't think anybody disliked the hookra drift though. Did you see any comments of disliking the hookah drift? I think no, most people loved no. it. And I think it's gorgeous. I think uh, you were saying it was just a joke though. No. I don't, I mean, who wouldn't like a drift of hookah? That's true. Maybe somebody. Yeah. Yeah. Nicole said, what's the line on the brick walkway? Was something dragged down it or are there more project in the works? Inquiring minds want to know. That is where a hose laid on the brick walkway and we had the rainstorm and a bunch of dust settled under the, the hose. I just need to hose it off. It's just like a dirt line right now. LS said, how are you able to plant so close to that tree? I always have trouble with tree roots. Junipers typically do the taproot thing, right? Like they're a taproot type of tree. Hang on juniper root system they usually have a very deep tap root gosh i always say those things like like i'm an authority because it's something that i think i've known in the past and i always question myself a little bit because i hate to give anybody wrong information but yes they create a very deep tap root they don't have very many surface roots for the upright type anyway for um, more ground covery type they are a little bit more shallow rooted so that's something to keep in mind but um yeah i haven't dealt with any big roots around that tree the tree that's the most difficult for me to plant around is the maple tree i have by our back shade porch my word is that one a hard one to plant around um i don't see any of the roots popping up out of the soil like any soil disruptance disruption uh, from roots but boy it is hard to dig even a four inch hole in that area jordan said how did you guys create the facial expression on the tree above the hydrangea that was there i don't know if it was from the previous owners or from the owner owners before uh, those owners, I don't know who put it on the tree. I think you would remove it in a second. Aaron's like, yeah, he would. I think it adds a touch of whimsy. Not the right kind of whimsy. It's a conversation piece and I think it's really kind of cute. And I can see it from inside. When you look out and you see the 
<laughs> so weird. It's not weird. It's, it's so weird. <laughs> I think it's kind of cute. It's a, like a little thing. You can still buy them. They're just the eyes and the mouth and a nose, I think. And you can buy them. At some garden centers carry them. <laughs> I think my dad could order them. Tammy said, I've been watching you for a while now, but I can't seem to find your history, like how you started, what you do, etc. What video explains this? I'm not sure we have an actual video that explains uh, all of our not history. Not a single video. I mean, you've talked about, you know, bits and pieces here and there. Yeah. Well, I grew up in a gardening family. My parents have a garden center. Um, they have two acres of landscaped gardens around their home that I grew up working in. Aaron had a lawn care business, like you owned and ran a lawn care business for several years, and then you sold the business to go to college. Like he was a young entrepreneur. Imagine that. We both went to college, but neither one of us for anything related to horticulture. Right. And I have no degree in horticulture, just, you know, growing up in it. I worked at my parents' garden center after trying a bunch of different things and not liking anything. Nothing fit. Like, I went to college to become an RN. Quickly found out that wasn't the path for me. Um, I worked in business banking. I worked at a vet clinic. Uh, I worked at uh, our church. And a few of the random things. But then... You went and worked at your parents' yeah, garden center for worked, 10 years? Yeah, I worked at the garden center for 10 years. And then uh, we started YouTube videos 2014. Dang, seven years ago, we started doing videos. And it was just because Aaron was really interested in videography. Honestly, he needed something to film. And so I agreed very reluctantly, very reluctantly to do it. But I think you kind of liked it. There must have been something about why. it that you enjoyed. I, I don't know. Like maybe Either way, it was people a... started watching, and yeah. then it just kind of turned into a full-time gig. Yeah, we didn't go full-time with it until it was two years after that you became full-time. I still worked two days a week at the garden center for a short time. Then when I got pregnant with Benjamin in 2017, um, I started, like, phasing myself out. And finally, my dad, like, I hadn't gone to work in, like, a month. He was like, are you, uh... Are you going to come to work anytime soon? Like, when are you planning on working? And I was like, nah, no. I just kind of knew that, um, you know, I wasn't feeling like the best, I guess, when I was pregnant with Benjamin. And it, this, you know, YouTube channel, it was a lot. It was a lot. And the, then we'd moved into this house that year, too. And there was just a lot going on, a tremendous amount of work to do. Um, no, we didn't move into this house that year. We moved in the prior year. I don't know. It's really squirrely, all the different dates and stuff to remember all of it. But... In short, it's been a really fast, really fun ride. Um, and so here we are, you know, full-time YouTube videos like five years later. Mm -hmm. We should make a video at some point kind of chronicling it with like photos and, and such. Oh, we should. I don't know that I will enjoy seeing <laughs> myself through the seven years <laughs> and two babies later. Uh, okay, David said, so I noticed you use Biotome when you're perennial plantings. Do you use it when planting annuals too? Yes, we do in ground annuals. And then I usually add flower tone or biotone or some kind of slow release fertilizer into the soil and containers as well. Shulan said, is it too late to plant these since it's September now? No, our growing season is so long um, and we keep planting. As long as we can dig a hole in the ground, we keep planting stuff. Um, the main thing is just making sure it has proper water. Um, we mulch up over everything. So things are better off in the ground than they are in nursery containers anyway. And it's just what we do. So we just kind of keep on trucking. Um, I think some people say that, you know, six weeks before your first really hard frost to let a plant really root in, that's kind of your window of time. I think you can fudge that a bit though. I mean, we plant, we plant so much. I think it's mostly just because we have more mild winters. Now, yeah. On average. Yeah. So I think in some areas of the country, specifically areas where like there a lot of planting is done mm -hmm. you probably need to stick closer to the six week probably rule. so yeah okay next video was making a wedding bouquet from our cut flower garden that was just a really fun different thing a friend of ours is getting married uh, she and her bridesmaids and an, another gal who actually has a cut flower garden as well and she was doing some of the flowers at the wedding they all came over to cut out of our cut flower garden because i told megan like you can come and take whatever matches your wedding you can just Take it all, take it all. And so we had a fun time doing that. And um, they took the flowers, every bridesmaid made their own bouquet. It's kind of a fun activity for them the night before to come together and do that. And then I made her bouquet the morning of the wedding. And it turned out really fun. And the most fun part about it, I sent her a picture and she was like, it is 
beautiful, but did you remember that I really wanted love in a puff vine? <laughs> and she goes, you don't have to do it. You don't have to like put it in there. But uh, I was so glad that she reminded, I just forgot. She reminded me that um, she had wanted that. She wanted some, a very unique element added into the bouquet that nobody else had. So having that love in a puff vine really brought some movement and some whimsy to the bouquet. And she also wanted a lot of dried elements. So I used like dried yarrow seed heads from the garden. I used amaranth hot biscuits, which wasn't dry, but it has that dry appearance. Um, we also worked in some magnolia and stuff like that. that has the brown underside of the leaf. It was just a really fun time. And Benjamin was a ring bearer at her wedding and it was so it was a Western wedding because like she comes from a family of like cowboys, you know, uh, ranching kind of stuff, horses. It was really fun. Michelle said the bride looked beautiful and the bouquet was stunning. Benjamin looked darling in his cowboy outfit. And that was kind of the general consensus. He didn't love wearing it because it was so hot. It was 97 degrees and uh, like humid mm -hmm. that day. It was so muggy and it was, there was uh, no breeze, which is really weird for our, our area. And so it was hot and it was outside in the sun the the wedding was we were all pretty hot maureen said wouldn't laura's hartley greenhouse and the property surrounding it be a beautiful backdrop for a future family or friend's wedding <laughs> you don't want to do that <laughs> i don't think so the only wedding i could see here in the future is the wedding of one of our kids yeah That's well you it. know interestingly in that same spot the uh gazebo was built for a wedding like its That's whole right. purpose yeah was for a wedding right and now it's looking very nice down in the park downtown they're almost done the i was down there yesterday and they had a couple guys down there sanding it so they're getting ready to stain um the whole thing and i thought we would maybe go down there after they're all done and if we do a free flower day again if we can get it together to do that this year i think we should do it from the gazebo that would be really fun yeah Anyway, yeah, I don't really have any uh, desire to open up our space for any kind of event. I, I never think have. Our place would make, especially once the grass and the trees have, you know, grown a little bit um, and are looking better on the front lawn, I think our place would make like a really nice spot for a wedding. It, yeah, I mean, I can see that, but I don't think we would make any of our neighbors very happy if it was on any kind of a consistent basis. No, no it'd no, have to no, be a just, very special situation. Yeah. Which I'm not saying we should open up for, for weddings, but in yeah, if there a was a family years. member, well, just like the question or comment, I guess, said it would be nice for a family wedding or something like that. Yeah, but just our kids. That's the only family. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> that's it. Okay, Nikki said, when did you plant your stock? Was it early this spring? Yes, it was. And they fared decently through our heat. I mean, two months of 100 plus degree degree temperatures. I did pull some, uh, but there are still some out there that look really good. And now that it's cooling off, they're actually starting to push more blooms. So are the snapdragons. Uh, so it's very exciting again out there. Sarah said, it's fabulous. Good camera positioning too, Erin. Oh, yes. I think you might have mentioned this, but I can't find the video. Do you gravitate toward the Felco 321s now as your go-tos instead of the 322s? Thought I saw them in the studio portion of the video. Now, the 322 are the long ones, all right? Or yeah. the 321s, the long ones? I think the 320, the, oh, geez, I don't know. So there's the There's snips. a long one and a short one. Which one do you like, the long or short? I like the long one best, but if I just grab the short one, that's fine too. So there's your answer. They're both really helpful to have. Uh, Rita said, was that Aaron's dad that married them? Lovely wedding. Uh, no, that was not. That was Megan's uncle, actually. Diane says, does your property have a name? When I see the white fencing, it makes me think of South Fork from the TV show Dallas. You should name it and have a beautiful sign made for the entrance to your property. It would be great. I, I would have the hardest time thinking of a name. Yeah. We should do something like just real weird, weird like uh, West Bluff. People say, well, how does that make any sense? It doesn't. Just, <laughs> it's that's a conversation just, piece. It's just a conversation piece. <laughs> <laughs> Good idea. West Bluff it is. Yeah. <laughs> Jay Zori said, can we have the link to Morgan's Instagram, please? Uh, it is below the in the description below that video. It always was. But Morgan changed her business name like right after we posted the video, I think. The account At name. At some point, I noticed and the so link broke was broken. the link for a little while, and then Aaron updated it and fixed it. So you will find it in the description below that video. Zinnia Zinnia said, does he have three boys from another woman? What? I think that was because of the end shot with Benjamin and the other two boys. Yeah. Which are nephews? Nephews. Yeah. Yeah. No, they're Megan's 
they're Adam's nah, cousins. Oh. Yeah, they're Adam's cousins. Yeah. Yeah. And so Benjamin's ours. The other two, <laughs> the other two uh, they weren't ring bearers. They carried signs. They were sweet boys, though. And they play, they're older than Benjamin, clearly. And they played with him so sweetly. I thought it was just the sweetest thing. A lot of nice people I met at that wedding. All the nuts said, am I the only one crying while watching a total stranger walk his daughter down the aisle? Such a beautiful moment. Thank you for sharing it with us. I was so thankful that Megan let us share all those like really special moments. Her getting out of the truck, the kiss, coming back down the aisle, like those are really precious moments. And um, we, I texted her, it was like the day after the wedding, <laughs> like, sorry to bother you. She knew I was gonna text her though. Um, and. I told her what we ended up keeping in the video and then I just said we'll send it to you for preview so she watched it and I told her we can cut anything anything you're uncomfortable with us sharing and so we had full permission they loved it they didn't cut a single thing I think it was fun for them just to get almost a preview of the day so close because oftentimes you have to wait for pictures and things like that so um, anyway that was really really fun and those kinds of things choke me up too like the dad and daughter stuff and then like when people return from the military, those videos, when they surprise family members, like yeah. every time. Oh, or the ones where baby's here for the first time. Yeah. Or, you know, oh, like it makes or me kind see. of- Or see. Or see well for they the first time. They put on like glasses. Yeah. To where they have, are not blurry. <sighs> like it makes my, it gives me like the chills a little bit right now, just even thinking about it. Yeah. <sighs> Okay, next video was a September cut flower garden tour. Karen said, please, you don't have to rationalize why you plant so much. I did talk about the reasons why we plant so much because a lot of people ask me that. Well, especially for the people like the question who don't know the story. Mm -hmm. um, if you just kind of start tuning in, you'd kind of be like, what in the world are they doing? Right. If they're not selling things, why? <laughs> right. Um, your channel has been extremely helpful to us old gardeners as well as folks new to gardening. You and Aaron have brought so much to your community through your generosity and by example. I look forward to your postings each morning in such chaotic times. It's a joy to start my day seeing your beautiful gardens. I know they've been an inspiration to me. Oh, Karen, thank you. That's so sweet. Tara said, what about watering pumpkins? I planted seed the first time this year and they were doing awesome. Then gradually they started looking really sad and I've only got two long vi lines of vine going. I planted like 10 seeds. I put some bone meal on the roots trying to get some help and nothing seems to be happening yet. I can't tell if I'm watering too much or too little. I just don't know what I'm doing wrong. Our vine crops get water every single day. Three times three a day. Three times a day. <laughs> three times, that's right. Three, I had you up it to three times a day in the heat that we had, the extreme heat. You kept telling me that they looked wilted, and I was like, geez, I don't know what else to do besides... Well, you know what, though? That helped. It did. Yeah, they were hardly making it between watering uh, without being wilted, and I was checking for squash bugs and checking for, you know, any other signs of disease, or and that's a thing. Like, I would double check that you're not dealing with something other than a water issue first. You know, do you have disease-looking leaves? Um, do you have any insect presence, which sometimes you put water around the base of the plant and squash bugs will kind of like pour like boil out of the center of the plant which is really gross but you might be dealing with something that's not a water issue but if you live in a severely hot area you may like it may have needed more water um, through the the summertime so ours did get water three times a day there for a while they're back down i think to two uh and for not very long yeah just and to keep them moist each hill has a one gallon per hour emitter running to it um, so if we run it for an hour a day, it gets one gallon of water. When you look at how huge those vines are and the huge fruit they're trying to grow and support, one gallon of water does not go very far. So if we, we were doing it for like an hour, three times a day, so three gallons of water yeah. per vine crop when it was 100 plus degrees. When really maybe if we just put two gallon per hour emitters on there, we might be able to do it for like less. Yeah, still the like, same amount of, of water, yeah. just less times. But I think it was good. Like it kept them sustained like really nicely. They looked yeah. pretty good all day long. Um, Martha said, what a great start to the weekend. Thanks for the wonderful tour. I know you've previously done a tour of your orchard and you indicated you might be making some changes there. Have you considered planting a pluot? Dapple Dandy is great or a donut peach? I haven't really considered a donut peach. I've got two peaches in there that are fantastic. Um, the pluot is something I might do. Uh, my brother has pluot trees and they, they love. Uh, my grandpa, like, 
pluots are his life in yeah. the garden. He <laughs> loves their pluot trees. We all, all kind of joke about it, actually. Um, because usually when he brings up something about it's, his garden, it's about the pluots. And I went and uh, thinned them uh, for him this year. Um, anyway, I, I don't know. Maybe. There's only one tree I really want to remove, and that's the tail, uh, heart, harcot apricot. I'm going to give it another season, though, because I want to see if the fruits just, I don't know. Maybe it was a one-off this year because they were brand new trees. But the tilden apricot was fantastic. Harcot was just kind of mealy and mild to me. Jordan said, have you guys ever considered growing a mulberry tree? We have a massive mulberry tree in the front of our property. It's the one that the raised bed used to be around, but we removed that. It produces a ton of mulberries every year. They're way too high for us to reach. They all fall on the ground and then the foxes come. There were foxes around like hey, a couple, three of them. Yeah, last three night. foxes playing around like a gravel pile we have up there. Thank goodness I've got the chickens like really buttoned up and like protected in their coop because the foxes come through several times every single night. Nancy said the other day you mentioned decking out uh, the new area by the house for fall. How cool would it be to create a maze with straw bales and corn stalks for Benjamin to play in? Such a good idea. All along the path towards the parking area cut flower garden and with your talents Laura it would be the prettiest maze ever. That's such a cute idea. So for Halloween, like last year too, we had just our immediate family come over just because of everything that was going on. We didn't feel like trick or treating from house to house was a very good idea. Uh, and so we're gonna- Did anybody do that last year? Well, I think our, a lot of people in our area did. Mm. Um, I think this year we're gonna still do the same thing. I think it's way more fun and way safer just to do a fun thing at home. So we did like kind of an Easter egg hunt, but a Halloween version and we just hid Halloween candy everywhere in the garden and the kids got all dressed up and they don't care if that they're not going to house to house. They just care about the candy that they're finding. And so they got to go around the garden and find candy and it was so much fun. Um, and so I thought, I think we're gonna do that again this year and to do something else. I was thinking about doing a treasure hunt, Aaron, like actually burying something in the ground. Yeah. Like easy for him and giving him a treasure map. And like you find little things along the way to the treasure chest. Yeah. Anyway, we'll see what happens. Okay. And the last video from this week was the fall lit branch DIY. So that project was born from, I wanted something for our front porch that was no maintenance. I was going to plant a few things, even when I had the branch done, I was gonna plant around it, but it is such a pain to have things to water up there because they get forgotten, one, um, and they make a mess and that porch is wood. And I just like, even if you put saucers under it, the saucers collect water and then it starts to get green and it doesn't look that pretty. Anyway, so I wanted something nice, but I was pricing out branches and like lit branches with those leaves because I've seen them available in, in catalogs and things before. And I was noticing like a four foot size was $100. And then you add shipping to that. I thought, well, I have branches and fairy lights already. I can go to the dollar store and get some leaves. So I did like a little prototype and figured out that uh, green florist tape doesn't work, brown does. And like kind of learned some of those things. And I thought, well, maybe this would be good information to pass along for those of you guys who want to make something that's inexpensive, but really pretty. I love how it turned out. I ended up doing the practice one I fixed and made it into the another one that is sitting up there on the other side of the door. It looks really pretty. Morgan said, I'm all for the planter, but Benjamin's little voice saying, it looks so great with the camera just made the whole video. Oh, he is just like... He's a good kid. How, how did we get such a sweet little boy? Yeah. Like, honestly, he just oozes encouragement and sweet words. I mean, he hears those things all yeah. day, every day. Um, and so I do, I do think that helps, but he just, it's his nature just to be encouraging and sweet and wanting to help all the time. Uh, it's just, ugh, makes me so happy. Uh, LS said, Aaron, I think you've got some hacker comments under the GA name, C3 comments under uh, a, another gal's comment. Yeah, so on YouTube, there's now a YouTube hack, hacker spammer account called Garden Answer. It does not have the check mark though. Um, there's lots of them and, yeah. and it says Garden Answer and like new ones pop up all the time. Yeah. There's another one that's like pinned by Garden Answer. Um, you can you can hide them from the channel that I, I, I do. I report them, nothing ever happens. Mm -hmm. They come back. They just create a new account the next day with the same name. Yeah, and it's just a never ending. We yeah. kind of just like, we 
try to delete the comments or um, hide the user from channel and then we just have to move on. Um, so our account is Garden Answer with the, the check mark next to it. That's our legitimate account. The other one we have is Garden Answer Highlights and that's it. We don't have any other accounts. So don't please don't ever respond to any weird looking comments. You'll know if the comments from me, which I have been trying to make an effort to be in the comment section more, um, but you'll know. It won't be like, WhatsApp number, blah, 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 you know, or I have something special for We're you. We're not selling things in the comments. Yeah. Dr. Kirsten Bible said, did you put the fairy lights on first and then co cover them up with the floral tape? I couldn't quite tell what you were doing. I know. I'm sorry about that. I actually told, I was having some issues with the light. Did somebody did somebody say that I had I looked more serious than normal? Oh, I didn't see that. That's because I was mad. I was mad at those fairy lights. They were not doing what I did him to do and so we just sped up the, the process anyway so you take the fairy lights and go up a branch and then you turn around and come back down the branch when I was doing the practice one it worked great when I was doing the one went that we were filming it wasn't going as smoothly anyway so I was concentrating but yeah go up the branch back down the branch and then just keep doing that all the way up or down the branch uh, I ended up starting with the end of the lights at the top and working my way down the branch instead of starting at the bottom and going up, which I normally do. But lights first, and then I covered them completely over with brown floral tape. It's not completely opaque, so you can see the lights through them. And I find that fairy lights, the ones I have, are so bright that it's almost too much. And so putting that floral tape over them softened them to this really beautiful amber color, and they were beautiful. Like the light is perfect. S said, hi Laura, how's your Centara double blue lilac doing? I think you had it planted near your front porch. It was doing great. It bloomed this spring, even though our water was cut off to it most of the spring. It's now at a friend's house because we, um, you know, invited friends to come and dig whatever they wanted from those front flower beds before they got demolished. And, you know, a lot of those things I just figured I can get other ones. I can get a new Centara double blue lilac at some point, which I hope to, um, but we just- I did really like that. We should yeah, definitely put that on the list. Yeah, we simply did one. not have enough time or manpower to get them all dug up and moved into different locations. Things were just moving too quickly, um, which I'm thankful for. And I'm thankful that my friends were able to use them. So anyway, it lives on, just not here. Susan said, did I miss something? Where's Cheddar? Haven't seen him in a while. He was just here. Cheddar doesn't make appearances like Russell does. Cheddar is a lot um, more of a recluse. recluse. Yeah. Um, we do have another cat hanging out. It's the one that's that I found on the Chase Lounge this winter. I was like walking by the window and I saw this new cat in our sun porch, just like chilling on the, the couch in there. Um, anyway, I can touch him. I don't know really? if it's a male or a female. I'm like, I don't know. It looks healthy. I think we should call him Douglas. <laughs> I don't know. I gotta figure it out if it's a boy or girl. It's got long hair, it's beautiful. Uh, Patricia said, did you put electric outlets outside of your home when you bought it? Do you have electric outlets around the first property as I know you put up lots of lights outside? Uh, we had the one I plugged the fairy lights into, we had that installed last year, mm -hmm. I think. Um, and every time we do a project, that's kind of Aaron's forte. He makes sure that there's access everywhere um, because you always find yourself like wishing you had the ability to run something, you know. Every time you dig a trench, you should always put one more conduit in the trench than whatever you need. Yeah, so there's your advice. If yeah, if you're trenching something somewhere, always add extra so that you can get a wire through it if you need to. Anyway, um, we do need to run some on the south side of our house, though, along the bottom part, like where we sit now and watch the grass mm -hmm. at night. We watch the grass grow and we watch Benjamin running around. I kind of want to wait, though, um, to find out if we decide to actually do like a, front, a porch around. Because if we do a porch, I don't want to do it twice. Right. I don't want to put um, outlets in mm -hmm. and then realize they need to be bumped up sure. six inches or, yeah. you know, they're in the way somehow. Mm -hmm. We might be moving some windows around too. Yeah. We'll see. Maybe. <sighs> another project for another year. Our house really needs some like pretty, pretty major updates. Aesthetic updates. Well, like as an example, we have, is it a green tub in one of we, the bathrooms? It's like an olive brown tub. Yeah. And we had a matching toilet with a wood seat. Yeah. We updated the toilet. 
feet, but the bathtub's still there. But they're just, you know, the the bathrooms, a lot of them just, like, they look 80s. Yeah. Because that's the last time they were updated. Yeah. And they're that's pretty a bad. long time ago now. I mean, like, a 40-year-old bathroom. Maybe we should do those projects this winter and we should film them, put them on highlights. That'd be kind of fun. Well, yeah, I think we need to really plan it out, though. I... I I think we need to do a lot of stuff all at the same time because I don't want to just string everything out. I'd rather plan, figure out what we want, and then I think it'd be cheaper in the in the end to have like an electrician come and do multiple projects, you know, multiple rooms. And do you know what I'm saying? Well, yeah. Try to well, bust it... out multiple things at the same time. I'd rather wait longer to get it all done at the same time as opposed to stringing it out. We can and move into just... the Hartley while that's going on inside. <laughs> just put a bed in there? Yeah. Nice. And that's it, you guys, for today's recap or this week's recap video. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, and I hope you're having a really great day. And we'll see you in the next video. Bye.